On this episode of the Comic Blast Podcast, we talk about Colin Trevorrow's leaked Star Wars Episode Nine script, Taika Waititi possibly developing a Star Wars film, and the Ezra Miller Flash crossover. All of that coming up next. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Consider this mercy. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Comic Blast podcast. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Grayson, returning this week uh, alongside the co-host, uh, or one of the co-hosts, one of the hosts. Oh, God, I'm, I'm a mess. Uh, Keenan, how's it going, buddy? <laughs> You're not a mess. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm good. I'm happy to be doing the episode. Um, last week, we got a lot of like pretty good um comments on the last episode so thank you guys so much for listening to that one and, and enjoying it and sharing it yes um, which absolutely. was awesome so yeah yeah uh i feel like the past couple of weeks have been pretty good for us so um anybody that is new listening uh thank you guys for coming aboard um and yeah i'm just gonna get through all the housekeeping stuff out of the way i never know how to do this properly because i'm just like I, my mind just wanders so much um actually before i do that what have you what have you been up to tell us about your your life i feel like i just gotta we gotta just like get the tension released my first. life yeah i don't know what what have you been up to what what cool comic book stuff have you been doing or just nerd stuff in the past couple or the past week since we've last recorded the last week um well let's see last night i watched joker um still oh, did, a great movie so, so did you get the blu-ray or the 4k 4k um, nice, nice, nice. I I have to say, like, I don't know what it is. Maybe I just didn't see it the first time when the movie came out. But I've noticed yeah. a lot of hate for this movie lately, like on on the internet. Um, huh. Yeah, I'm kind of like shocked. Um, I think yeah, I just kind of ignored bizarre. it the first time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, watched it. Still great movie. Love it. Um, other nerd stuff going on. Not much. Uh, you know, we Have both are kind Spider-Man? of in school. Thirteen no. million times again. No, I, I have not. Um, yeah. I was tempted I, I'm, to one day. I'm I'm probably like this close. You can't see my hands, but they're very like my fingers are very close. Oh, I can see to, them. To, to, to oh oh really? Wow. Yeah. Oh wow, we're connected like Kylo Ren and Ray. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dude, Whoa, pass me a lightsaber. Stop touching Actually, my I'll knee. I'll pass you a lightsaber. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm like this close to starting up a new save. Um, <clears throat> just because I think what I want to do is back in the Arkham Knight days, I, um, <clears throat> I remember I did New Game Plus and what I did is, so in that game, it's very similar to Spider-Man PS4 where it's like you start off with like the standard Batman suit and then you yeah. get the upgraded suit. So what I did is I started off with the armored suit that you get, like that's the main suit of Arkham Knight, yeah. um, the really cool one that's like mechanical and like probably the coolest Batman suit ever, um, or at least most realistic in my opinion. But um, then what I did is when he upgrades his suit, I changed it to the Batman Beyond suit and played the entirety of New Game Plus in the Batman Beyond uh, suit. And what's really cool about that was – I'm a sucker for like immersion when it comes to like the cutscenes and everything. And so yeah. what was super cool is that in in that entire thing, like there's moments where like Batman takes his helmet off and it literally like the Batman Beyond helmet like has its own custom animation for when he takes it off. And I was like, that is so cool. Yeah, that is cool. Like there's a part like kind of later in the game. I'm not going to spoil it for anybody who hasn't played Arkham Knight because I, f- I realize that games are a little bit like – not as many people have played games rather than yeah. watch the movie or whatever. But there's a moment where he just, like, takes off the helmet for, like, the first time and just kind of sits down. And, like, it's in a really cool moment. And I was, like, shout out to Rocksteady for, like, for putting that in there. Because they could have easily have just made it where it's, like, I don't know. Like, he just, he takes it, like, he tries to take it off and then it just, nothing comes off. So, like, there's a lot of games that do that or it's, like, yeah. it's kind of a skin. So, you like, it doesn't really interact with the cutscenes. Yeah. So what I'm thinking back to the Spider-Man thing is I'm thinking I'm going to start the game off with the advanced suit and then get when he gets his upgraded suit, 
possibly switch it to the uh, comic book Iron Spider suit. I'm not sure yet. Um, wait, and wait, play- wait. The, wait, the upgraded suit is the ad- advanced suit. Yeah. I said start out with the uh, with the advanced suit. Yeah. So, like, so, oh, so you okay. start yeah, the I game off. Saying. Like, I mean, obviously yeah. you can't exactly start it off, but, like, that's what play I play through in, like, the opening thing. And then when yeah, he yeah. makes his new suit, make it the Iron Spider uh, suit and play the entire game in New Game Plus in that Iron Spider suit with the arms. Not the MCU one, to be clear. The good. one from the DLC, because I freaking love that suit. I don't know why. Um, and play through the entire game that way and just see how it turns out. But then, it can, then again, I may just get bored of it, so I don't know. By, by the way, I got something I, I need to confront you on. Um, okay. So you uh, made a post on – I don't remember if it was your personal – yeah, it was, no, a, it, was, it, was a, it was on the Comic it was, Blast. It was on the Comic Instagram. Blast one. Mm-hmm. You you put out a poll asking uh, people which uh, hot toy you should get. Yep. Um, it seemed like the majority of that was okay. So the two options were the Mandalorian. Yes. And then uh, the Iron Spider uh, mm-hmm. suit from the PS4 version of Iron Iron Spider. Yeah. Um, and it seemed like it was like pretty much leaning towards the Mandalorian. Yeah, it was a pretty pretty vast majority. Of yeah, and I, I'm just here to tell all those people that they're wrong. And really, that you should definitely get the Iron Spider. See, okay, a little confession here. So I was talking to some friends uh, last week, and they saw, like they were like, "By the way, like one of my friends was like, I accidentally clicked for Iron Spider, but I met Mandalorian." Oh my god! And I told him, and I was like, "I'm gonna I'm gonna be real with you." I vote. I went on my personal account and voted for Iron Spider. <laughs> so like, clearly, like you know which one I want. Yeah. But it's like I just wanted to see like what people, which people preferred. Um, I'm still unsure yet, but like I, I do really want that Iron Spider because like, and, and I would get the advanced suit one, but like I don't know why. I just feel like having that Iron Spider one would be so much cooler and unique. And yeah. plus, like, dude, the arms, like the poses you can do with those arms, like just go to their website and look at all of the pictures for the Iron Spider, and it's like the it's just it's so well done. So yeah, Iron Spider, you have like if you do get a hot toy, Iron Spider has to. Be it, I think, for for the PS4. I think like yeah. um, yeah. I like one of one of the hot toys that I kind of have had my eye on for a while is uh the Mysterio one. Um, really? Oh yeah, wow! It's it's one of the best looking hot toys. I think the helmet actually glows on the inside and everything like that. Ooh, even though sick. I kind of talked crap about Mysterio on the last episode of the podcast. Yeah, I was about to say I was like, what's going just, on here? <laughs> it looks so freaking cool, and I really want that one. But it's about two years away, and I. I I don't Ooh. think I'll be able to wait that long. Oh um, man, that's what some people have said. Like the the wait is so long that it's like at that point they don't even want to put in the money. Yeah, it just feels like it's so long away. Yep, the um Ray uh, from the Rise of Skywalker is like gonna come out in twenty twenty one. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Normally just... they announce them and it's like a year and a half later than they finally start coming out. Because what's that's... gonna happen is like let's say let's say you go ahead and purchase that one or pre order it. Mm-hmm. Something else really cool is going to come out the next year, and you're like, "Well, I, I'm kind of screwed on this." Like, you yeah, because you spent all it. your money. Because I mean, a hot toy is roughly two thirty to two fifty, depending on which one yeah. you get. Um, and yeah, don't get me yeah, wrong, it's worth it. But I mean, if my only dilemma right now is I just don't know where I'd put it because I just don't have enough room. Like, I, I'd have to get like this amazing like display set of just this thing. And honestly, I probably would just start playing with it, which is really sad. You can do what I do, and I just sleep with it. <laughs> you just you wake up in the middle of the night, and you're just, you're just missing your hot toy, and you're like, oh, my God, where is he? Some, where is he? Sometimes his, like, his oh. eyeball kind of pops out, but there's, there's what? tons. Yeah. His, his, his eye will pop out. Like Peter Parker's eye? No. like uh, Oh, yes, okay. The interchangeable eye. <laughs> I was like, that's kind of scary. This is all a joke, by the way. I don't sleep with my toys. Uh, yeah, for, yeah, for sure. I, yeah, I don't I sleep do with, with my toys I do play either. with them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that was our little introduction thing, just because I like to talk about general stuff. Um, so housekeeping stuff, as usual. Um, if you're not already following us on our social media platforms for any new people or people who just haven't done it yet, um, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at Comic Blast underscore. And our personal social media handles should be in the description of those um, for both Instagram and Twitter. Um, yep. We also have a Patreon um, that will be... Uh, patreon.com slash comic blast official 
Um, we've been doing that since about October, and currently we have two patrons. One is at the sponsor level. We mention her every week, and that is Jess. Uh, yes. A shout out to her. And also um, Joseph. He is at the uh, – I can't remember the exact level he's at, but he has also been the sponsor. The, both of them have been here since the beginning. He's, so we he's a bounty hunter level, which is bounty as close level. to a sponsor as you could get yeah. um, uh, through our Patreon page. Yeah. So if you're interested in throwing us a couple bucks, it can definitely help us. Uh, it, it helps motivate us and just helps us uh, out. Not uh, even uh, that. Like, it, it's just, yeah, yeah the 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 podcast, like it, it does require a little bit of money um, just for mm-hmm. – you know, host finding a hosting site and stuff like that, and yeah, um, I mean, we we do this pretty much all for free ever since almost a year now. Yeah. Um, I like yeah, in a couple weeks it'll be a year. So and we've been doing this pretty much for free ever since then. Um, but I mean, you kind of have to with these things. So it's not like we're asking for your money or anything. It's, it will be free and probably always will be. Um, so, but if you are interested in seeing uh, more episodes and just kind of help support the uh, the channel and the podcast, uh, it could really help us out a lot. Yeah. So. Real quick, uh, Joseph, I think he, because he, he's been a patron for a while now, I think he has like a um, Twitch channel or something like that. Oh, really? Um, I'll retweet that at some point in time. So if you follow me yeah. on Twitter, uh, go check out his uh, Twitch streams. I, yeah. I think I see him on there pretty often doing that. Yeah. So go to at Keenan Creates. That's your Twitter, right? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, go there and he will tweet out his Twitch channel, which that's pretty cool. I didn't know about that. Yeah. Um, one last thing I want to shout out because I promised him I would. Um, so this past week, I recently received some some custom pins um, by the by a user on Instagram, the name at the Galactic Trader. Um, I actually found him through one another podcast that I follow, and he was selling a lightsaber. And I was going to buy it, but I didn't because it, it was two days too late. Um, probably for the best because I probably didn't need to spend money on a lightsaber. So <laughs> I'm kind of glad I just didn't do that, and that's yeah. gone out of my mind. Um, but he, I bought these two really cool custom pins from him, and he does a lot of stuff like that. He was he was doing a pre order for a Spider Man pin, and I don't know if he's still doing it now. And he needed to reach a certain amount. I believe he needed to reach 15. Yeah. And if he reached that number, he would have put it out. And it's essentially the um, the pin is like a a drawing of. Uh, in Spider-Man Far From Home when uh, Peter takes a selfie while he's swinging at the end of the movie. Yeah. Uh, it was a super cool pin, and I was like, I would have absolutely bought this. So he needs to get those numbers up, um, but he may have dropped that. I, I don't know. Either way, he has some awesome pins on there, and so I just wanted to give him a quick shout-out um, and go follow him on Instagram. It's at the Galactic Trader. So Galactic. That's cool. I didn't know that. I, I like getting, like, really cool pins, so I'll check it yeah. out for sure. Yeah, you kind of inspired me a little bit. So Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, other than that, um, that should be it for all the housekeeping, unless I'm missing anything else. Nope. All right. We're cool. good. Uh, so do you want to jump into our one of the new things? We didn't get to do the other one, or we don't have the other one prepped this week, but for the um, for the headlines. Yeah, yeah. If you're new to the channel or you or new to the podcast and you didn't uh, catch our last episode um, from last week, we started a new segment where we go over this week's most absurd headlines that we kind of just see circulating in the news. Um, and essentially I'm the only one who's seen these headlines and I just let Grayson react to them because it's really funny to see. Yeah, it's actually great. And sometimes we see both of them, but I just, I love this because we both see just some of the dumbest headlines. So, so yeah. What do you got for me? Yeah. All right. First one. This one's hilarious. Okay. I kind (laughs) of want to save this one for last actually. Yeah. Save the best for last. Okay. Let's start with, um, uh, ridiculous headline I saw was that Lucasfilm reportedly has 14 Star Wars movies in development. They had yes. now hold the record for most movies in development, recently beating DC. That's that's my own little end. I put that in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I mean I guess it depends on what you'd call in development. I mean if we're talking about literally just the smallest things as like possible ideas, then maybe. But fourteen seems pushing it a little. <laughs> like Yeah, I mean fourteen just that number just seems way too high for me, considering they they recently kind of canceled a trilogy already, and yeah. and then um, you know they've already said that they're going to scale back on releasing the movies as yeah, often they... as they were. So I, I highly doubt that fourteen is that number. 
it was it 14 mm-hmm. projects or 14 movies 14 movies in development yeah see that doesn't seem like if it was projects to possibly like some animated and stuff animated yeah. exactly then i could i could see that yeah but i just no that that's dumb <laughs> a little bit ridiculous um yeah. next headline uh the morbius trailer confirms that horror is actually the future of comic book movies okay i mean i mean i i have seen this whole uprising with this whole like okay we you know with Doctor Strange into or in the multiverse of madness or whatever, like yeah. that was kind of leaning towards horror, and now Morbius, and then also Venom, kind of maybe was eh, not really. Oh no, uh, that was so far from a horror yeah, movie. It, I mean, they marketed at some points of it being kind of horror esque, and now What's... with um with the new X Men movie, uh, the new mutants being kind of horror esque, people are yeah. like, they're like, eh. I mean, let's. I will get this out of the way, like from the. From, like, a big part of comics is the weird kind of scary parts of it. You know, it's a big yeah. part of sci-fi and things. And so there's a lot of comics that are, like, you know, very dark and um, and horrific. Um, so, like, I would – I mean, I don't mind seeing, like, kind of a, like a comic book horror genre. But, like, there's – I mean, you can't – you can't make your entire, like – universe based on like scary superheroes or whatever like there's just there's only there's so much limitations you could have with that and i think the genres you have to work with have to be attuned to like the character or the team or whatever you know i think universe um the whole idea about this segment that we do is we essentially we don't read the stories um so we're going based on the headline and i'm assuming that the uh writer for this story is is trying to make the case that um I don't know. Maybe there should be an an increased amount of comic book movies that are kind of horror f- focused. Yeah. Um. But to be honest, like I can't think of a I can't think of a comic book movie recently coming out. Um. That's been horror. Um, no, not really. I yeah. Mean, I, I think the closest you can get to horror that has come out is possibly some of the Batman movies, but not even that they're like that the entire movie is horror, that there's just segments that are, yes. like, horror. Like, I would say, like, the Nolan movies um, definitely have some... Scarecrow. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. That's, dude, I remember when I first saw Batman Begins and the part where he's, like, where well, there's Scarecrow and also, like, remember the part where he uses the drugs on Scarecrow and he yeah. and he sees what Batman, like, the nightmare version of Batman? Yeah. Dude, such a... They should make a hot toy of that. That, um, that'd be so sick. But like that right there, I was like, oh my God, that's so scary. And I was like, I was like six when Batman I Begins think, came out. So like, yeah, I think there's like every movie kind of has like elements or some movies have elements of horror. I don't think that there will really be horror focused comic book movies no. other than maybe New Mutants. But I feel like that's just going to be like a but darker even the, sci-fi. Yeah, I was about to say like even the in like you see in the New Mutants trailer, like, you know, at the very end, like uh, magic using her yeah. like like a light sword thing to fight like a what is it a demon bear or whatever it is new new mutants is weird man yeah <laughs> um that is a whole different side of x-men so um yeah i'm not even like, sure morbius will be like a horror movie i I don't, I don't see it going that way i i could see some segments being scary but i mean other like it's still gonna be like a i mean i think any type of villain you go for can be scary like yeah. okay Let's think about The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which we were saying right before this podcast that we've had the urge to watch The Amazing Spider-Man movies. In both of those movies, there are, like, horror-style things. Sure. Because, yeah. like, all villains kind of have that, or at least certain villains. A lot of Spider-Man villains do. But I'm thinking in The Amazing Spider-Man 1, remember that scene where it's, like, Gwen in the closet, and it's the lizard, uh, like, trying to find her? Yeah. And there's, like, dude, that part, that part's actually kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> and then The Amazing Spider-Man 2, when... Um, when Harry's turning into Green Goblin, yeah, that, that's very like, I mean, kind of horrifying. It's like so, a sci-fi horror type yes, feel. Yeah, I'm thinking about like the rumor going around for or Doctor Strange Two was that this was straight up going to be a horror film, and that, which um, they since backtracked on. Yeah, I, I just don't see it happening um, because I think the money really is in you know making it feel like a comic book movie. Plus, uh, it'd get a lot of backlash from like you know parents go like taking their kids to go see you know this movie that's like all right dr strange this awesome like magic based hero yeah oh i mean there's different 
there's different types of horror i could uh, like even the even joker kind of that can be seen as a horror film I yeah think. i could i could definitely see that um but yeah i mean like it, it is what it is I don't, I don't think we're gonna see a lot of uh comic book movies that are horror focused it's definitely not the future of comic book movies like the title says yeah interesting yeah interesting. let's get into the next headline this one seems like it's a review for a comic this is the headline i'm gonna read it avengers marvel's superman wants to murder a pregnant woman here's why <laughs> what what does that even mean uh so this one i actually had to click on and i hate that i had to click on it because that means oh. they get they get probably money for advertisements on that but i was like i actually have to see what they're trying to say in this hold article. on actually before you say that i'm gonna try to decipher it say it one more time avengers marvel's superman wants to murder a pregnant woman here's why okay so here's what i'm gonna get from this i'm going to assume that f- the that marvel or the, so that marvel has a character that this is from a comic like you said that is very similar to Superman. Like, that is their Superman, you know, as they yep. call it. Like, you know, how um, people will say, like, I'm trying to think of a character that, like, you know, Deadpool I mean, Captain is Marvel's America's Deathstroke. Been, yeah, Captain America's kind of been compared to, to Superman in terms yeah. of, like, morals. I, th- I think they're talking about maybe just, like, the ability set. You exactly. Know? Um, and Because there's, like, a character in Marvel called, like, Warrior Woman, who is literally just Wonder Woman. Like, literally Wonder Woman. Wow. Um, and so, and That's she's like lame. a super C list. Oh yeah, I mean that is so this, stupid. But this is the thing: is like it's like Marvel and DC. Like I, for, I mean, Marvel, Marvel has stolen a lot of DC's characters. Oh, like, for I'm, sure. Like it's a big thing. But also, Marvel has a lot of original characters. Like, and that's usually their biggest ones. But yeah. what I'm going to assume is that, yeah, there's a character. It could be Sentry. I mean, that was that was always one that people, like, thought was kind of, like, Marvel mm-hmm. Superman. Um, and then he turned into, like, Void and, like, Dark Sentry. All this weird stuff. He's, mm-hmm. like, a super interesting character. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to assume from this. And that there's some plot arc where he's trying to, like, stop, like, somebody from being born or something. I don't know. Give me yeah. what you got, though. Like, what does uh, it actually mean? So you're actually pretty close. From what I've read... Um, this, this character is a very super Superman like character. His name's Gladiator. Um, so, uh, okay. Let's yes. look this character up real quick. <laughs> um, the, so, um, what? this character's name is Gladiator. He's uh, a lot like Superman. He does want to murder a pregnant woman. Um, the reason why is because, um, she has some sort of like uncontrollable power but she's pregnant and she's giving birth and with each contraction she kind of unleashes this wave of power that's destroying other worlds around her um so that's how the story goes it's actually taking place in in their main like avengers comic going on at marvel okay i know i know who gladiator is now he's a freaking weird character like he's just yeah i know who this guy is now okay (laughs) Uh, oh that guy yeah, I yeah. mean, he's just – well, because, like, I – when I was a kid, I read a lot of, like, Marvel enci- – like, I have a Marvel encyclopedia and a mm-hmm. DC encyclopedia, and I would just go through – and that's how I, like, learned so many of these minor characters Yeah, that I'm like, okay, yeah. There's also – okay, like Gladiator and, like, Hyperion and Vulcan. Yeah, they're just all, like, these weird, like, space dudes. They've <sighs> tried to get other characters going, and it just doesn't work for the most part. Yeah, because Superman will always be Superman, and you can't really, you can't really copy yeah, that successfully. I, mean, I think that the, what Marvel needs to do, I think, I think DC actually has done a pretty good job with their comics lately. Um, Marvel has just, I feel like they're they're on a downward trend right now. Yeah, I, I don't really have any compelling. Unfortunately, I have not on. been reading a lot of comics lately. Um, yeah, I mean, I tend I tend to read a lot of older comics rather than like recent. I'm not someone who just days. keeps up. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, that's, I think people tend to agree that, like, the, the best stories have already happened. Yeah. Um, which kind of sucks, but, like, I don't know, it's it's a weird, it's a mixed basket, I guess, but that headline is very funny. <laughs> like, oh, it's ridiculous. It's so random. Yeah. It's There's so just a lot going on. Man. Yeah, like, Marvel's Avengers, Superman, <sighs> whatever. Bro. Wants to murder a pregnant woman. <laughs> Uh, injustice gods among us <laughs> let's get into the uh actual topics that are relevant <laughs> yeah we show. have yeah that we actually do have a real list believe it or not <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah um so i'm gonna lead off with one that is that's been kind of surfacing 
And before I like talk about it, I want to say that like I'm not trying to like feed into this battle or, or like this this controversy that's always been happening and always will happen with Star Wars. Uh, but I but Keenan hasn't heard much about this, so I'm curious just kind of get his initial thoughts. And we won't speak too much on it to like rile up people. Um, cause I oh, just, I'm riled I just, up. Uh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I don't. I just don't want to just feed into that whole thing. So, uh, the topic, if you, in case you don't know, uh, because I didn't say it, uh, it was the Colin Trevorrow original script for Episode Nine leaked and apparently has been like confirmed or like is pretty much guaranteed. Like, is pretty heavily true. Yeah. Um, so, um, I'm not sure what all Keenan has heard, but I'm just gonna go through. So, um. The title of the movie was originally going to be called Duel of the Fates. Did you hear about that? Yeah, I don't mind that. That's okay. That's whatever. I, I hate that because it's so meta and it doesn't make any freaking like. Okay, it makes sense, but mm-hmm. I hate it because you know when you think like when I think of Duel of the Fates, I'm thinking Episode One. I don't want to be thinking Episode Nine or Episode One when someone's that's like. Fair. So like it's just it's a little too meta because of the song Duel of the Fates. But yeah. I mean it's not the worst thing in the world. Um. So then, so I'm kind of going to get into like the big plots of like, by the way, if you haven't seen episode nine, I don't know what you're doing, but like there's about to, I'm about to spoil that and then explain like the differences between that. So I wrote down some bullet points of like major um, things in the new script that are drastically different from the, the actual rise of Skywalker. Yeah. So the first thing is that, um, like the first order has completely like taken over the galaxy and like um <laughs> you're already laughing <laughs> what like, else is new that's the yeah, first sentence yeah. from the last jedi jedi the first order reigns yeah yep okay uh, so okay yep they've taken s- over the galaxy so uh hux is the chancellor uh, wow on, on what is Coruscant, happening i don't like on, this on coruscant um okay and so the resistance tries to like hijack a star destroyer blah 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 um because that well stayed dead he's not even remotely part of the story he's gone mm-hmm. um and will not come back um kylo ren's like looking for like darth vader's castle on mustafar which kind of already happened but he's being like haunted by uh the ghost of luke who is like really prominent in the story and he's like trying to bring him back you know okay um I'm fine with that. There's some other stuff about like him trying to find like Palpatine's master and all this garbage. I don't freaking know. It's so weird. It doesn't make any sense. I'm like, this is a little too complicated. Mm-hmm. Um, something about kind of uh, r- like Ray and uh, and Ben Solo like trying like they're con- contacting each other and they're thinking about like there's some hints that they may create like a new order and somewhere in the middle. Um, mm-hmm. And then, so something about like the end. There's go- there was a big final battle between Rey and Kylo Ren on Mortis from the Clone Wars. Okay. Um, and she tries to redeem Ben, but he's too far gone to be saved. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, uh, yeah, Chewbacca flies an X-wing. I don't know. That's the, that's another thing that I heard. Uh, oh wait, I didn't read this part. Uh, interesting details like Kylo Ren forging a new mask of Mandalorian metal. That's so dumb. And then battling on hallucination of Darth Vader. Okay, that's actually kind of cool. Uh, yeah, I would actually pay just to see that scene. Well, there's a short film on YouTube, so you're welcome. Hmm. Um, yeah, and it's it's straight. It's right before the the Force Awakens, so I consider it canon. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, it's like a fan made thing, but yeah. So those are the plot up. points. Chancellor Hux, Palpatine stays dead. Ray, by the way, Ray is a nobody. She stays a nobody. Um, Ghost of Luke is very prominent. Kylo does not get redeemed, and there's a final battle on Mortis. Um, I like um, I like the Luke haunting Kylo Ren thing. I kind of thought that that would happen. Ooh, Kylo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go back to the light side. Um, uh, yeah. So, you know, I don't know. Like, so th- this whole script leak came out i don't know who's leaking this stuff but they're not doing anyone any favors like uh, please just leave us in peace and, um so then there was um that and then there was uh there was um the first script that was for the rise of skywalker that jj and chris terrio worked on which apparently mm-hmm. got shot and then they reshot it and changed everything up um 
because uh, like I think Matt Smith recorded some stuff maybe. Or he was okay, so yeah, that was that one thing that I'm like, I remember I still think about episode nine that like Matt Smith was leaked to like be in the movie and then he just never was there and now he's in Morbius. Anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> whatever. I don't know. Like no matter what comes out about this, um, this film, like I, I love the Rise of Skywalker so freaking much. We both that, do. Like I could not be happier, happier um, with what I got, and nothing will change my mind. I um, uh, so. this is a this is a live thing. I've not talked about this be- before, but I think it'd be cool. So if you guys don't know, a while back we did a commentary on Infinity War before Endgame came out, and I would yeah. very much like to do a commentary on the Rise of Skywalker when oh, it comes me too. out. I think that'd be really cool because I think you and I are kind of like we we really dig it, and yeah. I just I don't know. I just kind of want to watch it again. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, this is the thing with Star Wars, like, no matter what, I'm always going to love Star Wars, like, there's just, there's just these weird things that happen that, like, that you're like, okay, like, you don't have to love everything in Star Wars, but I'm always going to love it, and if this had happened, like, I would have been fine with it, but I prefer, like, I think the biggest bummer for me, if this would have happened, which most of this sounds decent in terms of, like, Coruscant and, like, um, the ghost of Luke and everything. My biggest thing would have been that Kylo Ren wasn't redeemed. Um, yeah, that was I huge. Just, I just, yeah, that's such a big thing, and I think it just, it's so pivotal, pivotal to pivotal. What a pitbull. What am I? What am I? Yeah, pitbull, Mister Worldwide. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's such like a um, major theme of Star Wars for yeah. to to say that like you know no one's ever really gone and that is a big thing in the last Jedi which I still like that line and it's like it's such a big thing like Darth Vader he freaking just massacred all these Jedi and he's killed like thousands upon thousands of people yep. and yet he's still redeemed and it's such it's like a thing that like you know even though someone has may may have like committed terrible actions they're still there can still be good in a person granted like I don't think it's defending it's like saying that like Oh yeah, we should give you know mass murderers uh, like a second chance, like because but that's like why you know Vader dies, you know like he 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 f- achieves his purpose and he dies. Ben yeah. Solo does the same thing. He he comes back and he achieves his purpose and helping Ray, and then unfortunately he passes away. But like it's still it's still it's, a really good character moment, and I think it's true to his character. Had he stayed on the dark side, I feel like I just would have been rather upset with where nah, his character had gone but that i don't really like that even though like um probably before this movie i was like ah you can't really redeem him um and then i didn't think that they could just essentially do the same thing that they did with darth vader which is you kill him after he's redeemed because yeah then you have you know the whole thing uh, you know where if if kylo ren were to live obviously there's going to be some sort of consequences for his actions even though yeah. he's redeemed um, so what they did was essentially did the same exact thing that they did with Darth Vader and kind of yeah. eliminate that potential conflict by essentially killing off the character mm-hmm. and, and sacrificing themselves for the person who has always been good and who is yeah. going to bring, you know, who is the hopeful character and everything mm-hmm. like that. So it pretty much does the same thing. Um, they pretty much do the same thing in terms of yeah. like redeeming and. I've seen a lot of people say that, like, how, you know, Rise of Skywalker, I think we said it in our review that it it mimics a lot of Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. Um, But in a, I mean, I think in a good way, at least, at least in our opinion. Um, That, uh, from the moment that Kylo Ren was redeemed and threw away his lightsaber, the movie really took off for me there, where I was like, I'm loving this because... I I lived for that entire... Exactly. We finally (laughs) got to see Ben Solo, what this guy was actually, you know, like before he was... Because you don't really get a taste of it, like no. you don't really, you don't really know what he's like. I mean, you see him from the very beginning; he's just yeah. like this, you know, creature in a mask. As see, she that's, says, that's why I kind of like my my pitch original originally was to let the first um, movie in the trilogy just be about Luke and Kylo. Yeah, um, then or not Force Kylo and Ben. Be the middle. Yeah, the Force Awakens can kind of be the middle, and then this movie essentially would stay as the third film. Yeah. Um. So that way you can kind of see his turn to the dark side. You know the character. You kind of fall in love with the character. Then you see it's kind of like Anakin. You know your heart breaks for him at the end of yeah. Revenge of the Sith because you you know the character. You know what he's been through, and then you know it sucks to see how you know the people around him was affected by his decision. Yeah. To turn to the dark side, and, and I, the same think... thing could have been true for him and his family. Maybe the family split up because of this, but we didn't get to see that. 
Yeah. Um, so, and it, we see it in like comics and books and stuff, which sure. I just think is just kind of a little cheap. But yeah, even though like we, you and I, enjoy that stuff. Yeah. Um, because I see Star Wars more than just a, like a movie franchise. Exactly. Like I love the movies, like, but I'm kind of like Star Wars is this entire just thing, this in- entity, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, I. But yeah, I think I just would have been upset because like Ben Solar, Ben Solar, God, I freaking cannot talk. Ben Solar, Jesus, Ben Solo has like become one of my like, my favorite characters, yeah. at least in the films. So, Agree. Um, just seeing him kind of you know letting go of this that, kind of foolish. Uh, his, dark side thing yeah his his turn to the light side would not have worked without harrison ford being present for that film oh my god in that scene yeah um god, so that was about, so necessary we're going back to our that moment. rise of skywalker review right now I'm just <laughs> yes um so we should probably drop that because we have other stuff to talk about but yeah what a, yeah, yeah i mean uh, the, all of that's i don't like any of the leaks i'll just say that i'm yeah. happy with what i have and, and, and i'll say that like the thing right before i did this is it makes me so mad that like people are just feeding into this like fueling into this whole thing i'm like if you like the leaks like that's totally fine and i'm sorry if like that if the rise of skywalker wasn't what you wanted that like that does suck i know that what does that feels suck. like um, i'll admit having been, like, been there it but sucks. like the people who are like feeding in with these like articles like when i looked this up to double confirm before the show i just see all these things like oh the colin trevorrow script has leaked and it's so much better than the rise of skywalker it's like it makes it's like the rise of skywalker is stupid blah 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 and i'm like all right We've got to stop this. Like, this is just like, it's just like, like it's, it's happened. It's in the past. Let it go. I mean, I like debating about this stuff, but I'm like, all right. I want to get one of those fanboys tears mugs now. It's, that was, that (laughs) was ironic. That was a big thing that like, I remember when that happened with the last Jedi and I was like, oh my God. And it's like, and now it's kind of come full circle. Yeah. I'm like, like, I feel like I can have one of those now. (laughs) <laughs> it's, you're just it's sitting so at a table it's, it's just both sides it's, both of it, the, the roles have choose. completely flipped we yep. won't get into it but let, yeah. let's talk about taika watiti yeah yeah that taika cheers watiti. everybody up yeah let's let's do it what do we got um taika watiti has been approached to develop a star wars film he didn't confirm it he also did not deny it um he always sends out these freaking um these tweets that are very like vague i guess um but yeah, I mean, Taika yeah. Waititi, he, he did probably two of the best episodes from The Mandalorian. I thought he only did one. I think he did two. I think he did the last one. And I thought he, I thought he just I thought he just did the last one. You may be right. Uh yeah. We'll just say that. Correct us if we're wrong. I don't want to look it up. Me either. <laughs> but uh, I mean he God. he nailed the ending. Um either way, he's been involved in the whole process as IG IG eighty IG eleven. Gosh. Um, IG but, uh, the yeah. 47. <laughs> um, what do you think about this? Do you want to see uh, that? Yes. Actually, I'll tell you what I'd prefer to see. All right. And, okay. and I've pitched this to people before. Uh, probably one of the best things to ever happen in Star Wars is that intro of that last episode of The Mandalorian with the two mm-hmm. scout troopers. And yep. what I would like to see is uh, I would like to see him do a parody show similar to the vein, in the vein of like The Office – um, where it's about some stormtroopers. <laughs> That'd be cool. That's, that's what I want to see. Like, uh, don't even like. Let's let's just delete this whole section of the podcast. We're gonna make that. Oh, okay. We're gonna make our own web series of that. That sounds awesome. It, uh, that's what I'm saying, man. Like, and you can even say it's like not canon or like or like put something before it to be like yeah. you know like this. We don't know if like it, you can make it a joke of like oh we're not totally sure if this is true. Yeah. Um, um, by the way, yeah, he only did one episode. I did look it up. It was Chapter Eight, Re- Redemption. Um, okay. So yeah, and then he voiced IG Eleven uh, in okay. three episodes. But yeah, I I would love if he did that because I just that entire dialogue in the beginning of that episode is great. But yeah, I'm also totally down to see like for him to do a movie. I think it'd be I don't know what it'd be about really because I don't really know what his vibe is. But like I feel like he makes it work. Um, this sounds it, like I feel like I feel like Kevin Feige is secretly getting more and more involved in Star Wars. Yeah, I, I I kind of like I can we've kind of John see like they got, got they got John Kevin Feige. Feige yeah they got Kevin yeah. Feige on board and then like the Marvel you know Marvel's just leaking the over bros. into there. He said what? They're gonna get the Russo Bros. Dude, could you imagine? I'd actually really like that. I I would be fine with it. Yeah, I actually would would like that a lot. Honestly, after um after Obi Wan Kenobi is finished, um I'd really like to see Deborah Chow do a a film. 
Uh, I don't know what yes. she would do, but she she okay. Back to two episodes. She directed the best two episodes. Yes, I, I was thinking that, incorrectly. I was about to say, I was like, I think you got the that. Confused. Yeah, yeah. She did the two best episodes, three yes. and uh, seven, something like that. Yeah, yeah, three, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, I yeah, I would love to see. I honestly, I love the whole like, um, the different directors for the Mandalorian. Um, oh, although perfect. I will say, directing a movie versus a TV show is a lot different. Um. But I mean, I mean, look I, at the Russo Bros. I mean, they did yeah, TV true. pilots and, yeah, that's and commercials. True. They, did com- they did Community. That is true. Yeah, yeah. I'd be down with it. I'll, I'd be. I'm down with the D- Deborah Chow thing if that ever happens. And I'm. I'd be down for the Taika Waititi thing. I don't know what he'd do, but uh, I'd be on board. I mean, yeah. I wanted to bring up. You probably saw my Instagram post about Taika Waititi. Um, I think it was oh. like uh, after Colin Trevorrow got fired from episode nine yeah yeah he was he, like taking a jab yeah somebody somebody tweeted at him and said we need to get taika watiti to do a star wars film or i think this was actually after the solo directors were fired i can't remember but at, at um, this point who can tell it's he happened just, with so many of them <laughs> he just quote tweeted it and said lol i like to complete my films <laughs> <laughs> and then like two years later he he's like rumored to possibly be doing I, i'm sure movie. because he did mandalorian his his feelings have changed a little bit yeah i um, think um as long as he gave he had the creative freedom that he wants because taika watiti is a very creative guy so yeah uh he i think he needs a few years because I, I still want to see his akira film uh i'm really oh, intrigued yeah. by that and he kind of put that to the side for for thor yeah um Sorry, so beyond. yeah um guaranteed one yawn per episode from grayson yeah man <laughs> i don't know why i'm tired dude i don't i feel like i got hit by a truck because i just i worked out yesterday i worked out today and man it was it was rough let me tell you it was rough i'm um, sorry man yeah i'm dying it's, it's okay. okay though uh all right what's the next headline <laughs> uh uh let's talk about the flash crossover because that caught us that caught everybody by surprise <laughs> that's the flash theme song thank you <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh man, that really got you. <laughs> um, that's it. That's the theme song. We have 19 more uh, minutes of the podcast, so you can just keep doing that for the yeah, rest. Yeah, I'll do it for five more minutes. Actually, you should just loop it. Just keep on looping. <laughs> Make that your ringtone for whenever I call you. Just be like, okay. <laughs> that actually, it kind of already sounds like that. Wait, what is it? I, I don't know. It, oh, okay. Just make the noise. That's what it sounds like. All right, cool. All right, no, I'm done. I'm done. Anyway, Flash crossover. Yeah, that happened the day after we recorded last week's episode. But I remember, I remember, like, <laughs> first of all, this is huge. But, like, I remember I was sitting in a meeting because uh, I got cast in, like, a surprise short film. And I was sitting there on Twitter because I was bored. And, um, and so I'm sitting there in my my friend goes dude the cw just did something huge and i was like like bad and he's like no 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 like really good and i was like uh what is it man i haven't seen any of crisis because i'm lazy and i just still haven't done it and i really want to um and he was like do you do you want it spoiled i was like i i don't care like i really don't and he sent it and i was like what okay (laughs) that's great that's insane actually like that they even managed to do that um and so it, honestly, it's like I think it's inspired a lot of. Uh, oh, by the way, I don't. I haven't even said what's happened. It's on the Flash TV show for Crisis. Ezra Miller's Flash has appeared, talking yeah. to Grant Gustin's Flash, and it's a really cool scene. If you, if you're not a big CW person, then like you probably won't care that much. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I mean, I I watched the first four seasons roughly. Um, you watched the first handful uh, as well, and so yeah. um, either way, even if you're a fan of just like the movies, definitely go check it out. It's super interesting. Um, really, it's really well acted too. Like, I, yeah. actually, it's actually really cool to see both of them together. I just thought it would never happen. Like, that's the more you think about it, the weirder and cooler it is, because it's just one of those things that you like. The the I see I've seen people put this out there. It's like the only way Marvel could top that, like or well. They could top it in other ways, but in a, a moment similar to that is if they got Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield with Tom Holland. Yeah, I think they, they kind of had the guts to do something that Marvel didn't do. 
yeah. since the be- since the beginning of the MCU, they kind of like you know they had Coulson and um what Sam Jackson w- was in Agents of Shield or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, since then, I mean, like they really, you know, they really did that, and it's it is shocking. I I saw it on Twitter. The clip was on Twitter, and I was like. I thought it was like somebody photoshopping or like editing something, and then I saw yeah, it trending. It, yeah, and then I like immediately I texted you. All I texted you was "bro," and you were like, "I know." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I yeah, was that's like, literally what I said. What? Yeah, I was like it's shocked because it does look a little fake at first, but then you look. You can go look at Grant Gustin's Instagram, and it is very, very real. Like they yeah. are touching, like in person, like they could tangibly hug each other, and it's so. It's crazy, like that is even that it even happened. Let's this this is sad. Okay, WB, the fact that this man had to go to CW to to be able to play the Flash, and you can't get this man what's a you, movie. What's your, I mean, he's not even the Flash. Apparently, not even. Well, he's he, just in a red suit, but like he was like the Flash, huh? Because yeah. like he literally his name's not even the Flash yet. That's how so underdeveloped Ezra Miller's Flash is in, in the Justice League, like DCU. Ridiculous. Ridiculous that. I don't know. Like, I feel like this was Ezra Miller being like, I really want to do this. And he probably did it for no money. He probably did. Oh, he, for nothing, man. Yeah. And it just was like, he loves the character. He loves the fans. And he really did something to, I don't know. Like, I. I f- I'm kind of envious of everyone who's kept up with the CW shows because I kind of fell out of love with them. Yeah. Um, but for they the people who's, yeah, for, for the people, people who stuck with it, I mean, I'm happy for those people because I mean, it's yes. just awesome. So apparently, like Crisis, um, spoilers for if you watch the shows, but from what I understand, they they combined all of the the universes into yeah. one. Even so the now, Titans. like, like uh, did they? Yeah, that's what I heard. Okay, then cool. Um, yeah, I mean, that would make sense. So, like, Batwoman and Supergirl and, like, all of them are all in one universe. All um, the Superman. They, for- they have formed the Justice League, like, officially said the Justice League. Mm-hmm. And, like, there's been some other, like, weird kind of things. Like, the Wonder Twins monkey is in there. Uh, if you don't know what the Wonder Twins are, old old comic book duo. Um, that was in- They had some cartoons and everything like that. Um, so, yeah, it's it's pretty cool what they've done. Like, they've... I mean, it's insane, though, to think, like, eight years ago where Arrow was at. Yeah. And now where it's at. Like, that's that's pretty incredible. It's and, like... And I have to commend them for it. I, I agree. Uh, looking at this, like, it kind of just brings me back to the good times when, yeah. like, yeah. when the DCEU was kind of just getting first kicked off. And, you know, you and I that were watching, a, like, Arrow and stuff That was still. a different time for DC, a time that I dearly, dearly miss. I mean, we yeah. had... We were getting games like Injustice and Arkham Knight, and we had these TV shows and movies were being developed with that were actually like promising and didn't crush like they weren't just mediocre. Yeah, uh, Man of Steel is great. Uh, <laughs> How much did it make? Uh, it was something like what, like six hundred million or something? <laughs> yeah, six hundred sixty-eight. Sick, I remembered. Um, so yeah, that was a different time. I think we talk about it a lot, and I'm hoping that the the Matt Reeves Batman movie is what inspires new light into the DC like film. I just, yeah. and people could say Joker does, but in my opinion, Joker is so, so un- separate. Yeah. It's so separate that I'm like, this is just kind of a one-off thing. Like, yeah, sometimes I don't even like people say like, Oh, Joker's like the first comic book, whatever. And I'm like, honestly, like Joker doesn't even feel like it's part of DC really. Yeah. Like it's just that, that maybe that's why it, it feels like it it's much, part but, of Gotham. Yeah. Like, I definitely get the Gotham vibe, yeah. but it's just... It, it's um, just, yeah, it's definitely an, a separate entity. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, like, isn't it crazy, like, that Shazam came out almost a year ago? Yeah. You and I pretty much both really like that movie, but it doesn't yeah. really get talked about that much. No, I, mean, Even I, think, though it's, it was, like, I think it's because it's relatively unremarkable, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't know if it's unremarkable, because I think Zachary Levi is amazing. It's yeah. Shazam. Um, but the whole, like, buzz about that movie's just kind of died down. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't know, man. DC, it's just... Well, it, so, since we're on the topic of DC, we should, like, we should talk a little bit about Birds of Prey, I think, because it's, the movie's, yeah. like, two and a half weeks away. That's and, 
Yeah, I'm like, I, mean, I dude, have okay, no Okay, it was almost been a year it. ago when that, like, little teaser thing came out, and we were so excited. Dude, okay, I looked it up. It was our first episode. We were talking that about... That was our first episode. Yeah, it, we were talking about um, the little shoot that they did for the costumes, mm-hmm. and we were like, oh, my gosh. We were like, this kind of has, like, John Wick vibes. Like, I was listening to us, and I was like, wow. I'm like, we have no excitement anymore for this movie. It was, like, kind of sad. Yeah. I have mild excitement. I'll say probably the most excited I am. And well, okay, so here's the. T- I'm going to start with the positives, and then I'll do like my one drawback because we talked about that a while back as well. Positive. Um, to, to, Mary so Elizabeth the positive, Winstead. Yep. Yep. <laughs> read my mind. Mary Elizabeth Winstead is Huntress, um, and then Ewan McGregor is Black Mask. Those are those are the two that I'm like very very excited for. Yeah. Uh, like at least like parts aspects um margot robbie looks fine as harley quinn like she does she just seems different in this movie like hmm. like a weird different i actually really liked her in suicide squad but i'm just not a big harley quinn fan yeah um at least after that movie um and uh, so the negatives though is that it pretty much everything is leaning towards that fake uh or not that fake that leak script being true man i forgot about that yeah, uh, when you watch that trailer again, there's some mom- there's some things that are some dead giveaways about that leaked script. Um, that's scary, man. That's like DC. I mean, it is rated R, and I totally forgot it was rated R. By the Me way, too. was like was that like a huge thing that they were gonna make it rated R? I swear, like I don't remember it being like, oh, this is gonna be the first rated R like DC. No, I forgot. Movie. Actually, was Suicide when Squad I saw PG thirteen. The- yeah. Okay. When I when I saw um recently I saw a TV spot for it and it said rated R. I was like, what? I was like, really? Like I forgot yeah, about it. Um, but they did mention that when you know the announcement came out that it was leaning towards rated R. But <sighs> I think that's gonna be DC's thing from now on, man. I'm mm. I'm thinking more, and I'm like, I think they're really gonna tap into the the rated R uh, aspect. I mean, you're thinking about Titans. You think yeah. about uh, not the CW. Um, I think the CW is kind of just going to stay where it's at. But then yeah. you've got like the Harley Quinn animated show on their streaming mm-hmm. service. That's like hard R. Yes. Um, and then now you've got you got Joker. Now you've got Birds of Prey. I mean, I think that's kind of the direction they're going, at least with the a lot of the darker stuff, which I mean, I like, but I also don't like. Like, I think they're going to make it rated R when it makes sense and PG-13 when it makes Listen. sense. Because, like, they're, they're going to make Shazam rated R. Like, it doesn't make any mm. sense. Like, why would you need to make that rated R? Uh, I, well, here's the problem. I want my Justice League, okay? Yep. That's that's what this boils down to. I don't need any more Suicide Squads or any It's more crazy Queens. how much more, like, it feels like more of the EU is comprised of, like, Suicide Squad and Harley Quinn than, like, then the villains. actual like yeah the, the new actual... thing is like villains how can we make a villain movie i mean suicide squad was made because of the success of guardians of the galaxy is that pretty much like what that kind of started like i feel yeah. like that was what happened and and suicide like the um assault on arkham yep. um thing yeah. it was like a, it was a, it was a hit um they really should have just stuck to that storyline, to be honest. But it, oh, the yeah. whole DCEU was so underdeveloped when they decided to make that movie that it just... I don't think they were really ready for that. It could have been a really good world-building uh, thing. Because, I mean, I think there was a lot of things with Suicide Squad that was actually like really cool and world-building. And it was like you didn't really have to have much knowledge about it. And it would have fit in well. But because mm. David Ayer's vision was so botched by, like, the executives at WB, from what I believe. Like, yeah. I mean, he goes on Twitter all the time telling about, like, original plans they had. And I was just like, man, I just feel bad for those guys. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, they it, cut it, his film to shreds. Yeah, dude. I mean, from the villain, like, the, originally Joker was going to be the villain. And then, like, um, just like, oh, God, man. They're just... I I haven't seen Suicide Squad in so long, man. Yeah, it's I haven't, been well, I haven't seen it since. Well, I haven't seen we're it since see part theaters. two in a couple weeks. So <laughs> <laughs> I keep saying it over and over. I'm like, this has the feels of Suicide Squad all over again. Listen, Maybe I'm gonna not. Try to, I'm gonna go back in optimistic because I. So I have this one friend, and she's like, she freaking loves Margot Robbie, mm-hmm. and she's like a film student, so she's like, she knows about movies decently. But like, I, I almost I'm like, oh man. Like maybe I should just invite you to come watch it with us because like maybe her like 
a positive aura will like give us a better feeling of it. That'd be nice. <laughs> but I'm like, I know for a fact if it's me and you or me, you and my dad going to see it, we're gonna walk <laughs> out and be like, <laughs> Oh my god, dude, I would love to see it with your dad actually. When's the last time you saw a movie with my dad? Mm. You know, it's been a while. Yeah. I don't know, man. That's it's been a Dang, while. Dang, it might have been Justice League actually. No. Oh no, 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 no. It was it was it was actually The Last Jedi. No. It has not been that long. Joker. Yeah. I did I didn't see it with your dad. Yeah, you did. Joker my dad was there. Was he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was. I, I saw that movie three times in the theater, so I'm kinda like oh, okay. just... Yeah, the first time we saw it oh, yeah, yeah, night yeah. and he was okay. there. You're right. That was the You're last right. time we saw the movie. I was about to say, I'm like, dude, it has not been since 2017 of December. I was, I was like, he was there for Endgame. He was there for like all that stuff. Um, did I see? Oh yeah, I did see it with your dad at Endgame. Yeah. Jeez, man, where's my yep. memory? I don't know, man. You're getting, getting old. old. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I it is, man. It is so weird that Birds of Prey is coming out like that soon. Two and a half weeks. Birds of Prey. Can't and, wait for our review. Um. Yeah, it's going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So depressing. Uh, what's after that? New Mutants? Is that the next thing? Does, I don't remember. I I don't remember at all. I mean, yeah, I know Black Widow's in May. That's going to be cool. Birthday By the way, there was a new me. teaser for Black Widow. It looked good. I mean, it Yeah, was, I saw it. I will say, Taskmaster, I'm way more excited for him. Or her. It's... it's Shut up. I, <laughs> I mean, it I, could be. I saw something. Dude, I saw something. Never mind. We'll oh, okay. Yeah, maybe. I saw a potential, about. like, leak on that. Ooh. Um, so, but you know how leaks are. I mean, they could they could be true. They might not be true. Birds of Prey, New Mutants, Black Widow, Wonder Woman 1984, Morbius, Venom 2. Man, it's crazy that Morbius and Venom 2 are both coming out this year. Ugh. Uh, just give us Spider-Man. Uh, I'd rather two. watch both those movies than Harley Quinn. I thought you just called it Harley Quinn because it's pretty much what it is. Remember when it started out like literally as Birds of Prey and then it became a Harley Quinn movie? Yeah. Oh, and then Eternals. Was that it? Oh, that comes out November 6th? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Inter- this is just... 2020 is going to be a strange year. I-, I will say, I think the most excited f- movies that I'm excited for is Black Widow and Wonder Woman. Um. Yeah. So, I think Wonder Woman's up there for me. I'm sure it is. I, I, I don't I, know. I'm kind of getting excited for Venom 2 for some reason. I just got to see more for Venom 2. Yeah. I'm just more intrigued by it. <sighs> I'm just looking at this thumbnail for Birds of Prey, and it's just like... I feel like I'm dreaming. Okay. Anyway, I think we need to wrap this episode up. <laughs> hey, so real quickly, oh. since we have a few minutes... Yep. Um, Let's talk about Patrick Stewart saying that he met with Kevin Feige. Um, I think it was like a few weeks or a few months ago talk- oh. when they talked about X Men. Yeah, I didn't hear about this. Yeah, this is um, this is a new thing that came out today. Um, oh. But Patrick Stewart actually confirmed. Um, I think it's pretty interesting. I think that Kevin Feige, especially with like Deadpool, um, belonging to Marvel Studios now or Disney, um. Uh, it's interesting to see that he's kind of open to the idea or maybe just talking about it yeah um of bringing in um some established characters from the fox x-men series i don't think it's gonna happen um but it is yeah. it's it's pretty interesting o- obviously like he was involved with those first few x-men films um yeah so it doesn't a surprise me he's, he was involved with a lot of stuff back in the day the raimi films all that yeah um yeah, I, I think I mean, no, I just don't. I just don't. Eh, just nah. want a fresh start. I just want a fresh start. I like. I think that's just the Fox X Men is just in it. It's in such a different era, and also because I think I, I just don't want Patrick Stewart back because like I, it's not that I don't want him back because I don't like him. It's because Logan I thought was such a beautiful send off for both him and Hugh Jackman, who are yeah. arguably the two greatest, uh, you know parts of that universe definitely um, I, I would say it's probably like those two and then maybe um 
Nothing else. Uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, probably, probably Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. Um, but like, I just I don't need Hugh Jackman back, and I don't need Patrick Stewart back because Logan is the greatest movie ever. Is is just kidding. I don't know if it's yeah. the greatest movie ever, but I love that movie. So I, I'm happy that that film happened before this whole crossover or like the purchasing of, you know, God, almost three years X-Men. ago. Yeah, it's it's mind blowing. Time is flying, man. Anyways, I'm, just, I'm gonna go sleep. Yeah, <laughs> that's why time is flying. Honestly, maybe Sleeping I need to stop life. sleeping. <laughs> All right. Anyway, cool. Yeah, that's it for the episode, though. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm just, uh, dude, you can you can tell I'm just going off the deep end. All right, I'll I'll wrap up the episode. No, 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 off, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do do that stuff. Okay. Uh, first off, just want to thank everybody for watching or listening. Um, be sure to subscribe if you're listening on Apple Podcasts. Follow if you're listening on Spotify. Those are our two major platforms. Please, please, yeah. Please. Um, and uh, leave a review if you're listening for the first time, because um, that just helps us out a ton. Honestly, that yeah. like honestly, I would much I'd re- much rather have a review on iTunes than than a patron supporter. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm like, don't even stress about the money as much as just please give us a review. It's yeah, a, it's a, it's very helpful. Yeah, you know, um, God, I'm getting delirious. Yeah, I'm getting scared, so I'm gonna I'm gonna rush. This. <laughs> I'm gonna get scared. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, okay. Oh, wait, anything else you have to say before you um, like? Yeah, uh, follow us at Comic Blast underscore, and okay. um, that's really it. All right, cool. Don't don't do your thing. I gotta I gotta I gotta have my inner monologue. Uh, so hey Grayson, you got anything else uh, left for us? Shazam. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of the show, guys.